Hello, Kimi. Welcome back. Uh, what problem are we solving today? Hi, Max. Today, we're going to implement a deep learning application. Oh, that sounds so cool. Everyone is talking about deep learning these days. It is. It's a buzzword, in fact. Um, but in the research domain, remarkable publication has been made, as you see on the figure. Wow, so it's many increasing papers. Exponentially. Okay, tell us more about the basic concept of deep learning before we jump into the implementation part. Sure. Um, artificial neural network are conceptually inspired by the mechanism of brain cell communication. Oh, wow. So uh, you have like neuron um, and the neuron consists of dendrites. Dendrites basically collect signals, integrate them together. And then depending on uh, all these signals uh, together, um, there is the signal propagation through the axon. And after the axon, there are again dendrites and you have a huge network. And this is basically your brain, right? And uh, this deep learning approach is basically trying to model a brain behavior with some mathematical formulas, I guess. Exactly. So artificial neural network resembles the communications of brain cell mathematically. So a single neuron, as shown on the right side, the circle is a single neuron. It's a function, mathematical function, consisting of weight and bias. It receives real numbers from neuron in the previous layer and generate another real number mm. and transmits transmitted to neurons in the next layer. I ah, got it. So Kimi, I'm a bit confused. So that we have deep learning, we have machine learning, we have artificial intelligence, we have this convolutional neural networks. Can you give us an overview how all these things relate? Right, it's a bit puzzling, um, but this diagram explains very well the relationship of one another. AI is basically a conceptual terminology where many techniques are placed to make AI works. Machine learning is one of them. And deep learning is one of the methods of machine learning. Furthermore, convolutional neural networks, CNN, is one of the deep learning architecture. Ah, uh, okay. So CNN is one of the deep learning architectures. Exactly. So there are lots of architectures of deep learning. DNN, RNN, autoencoder, generative adversary networks, and so on. They're a specific type of deep learning architecture. Each of them is designed to solve a specific problem. CNN is designed to tackle image data analysis. Ah, oh, wow. So basically, CNNs are really good at working with images and recognizing things and understanding right. images. So exactly. that sounds really interesting, especially for the medical domain, because in the medical domain, there are a lot of pictures. So can you give us an introduction, like where these CNNs are actually used in medicine? Yes, I would like to introduce some interesting uh, examples of CNN in the medical domain. Uh, first one is the image classification. So mm, all right. Initially, the most contribution made in this application simply is classifying either it's A or B, malignant or benign or gram positive or negative. So it's a relatively simple and straightforward. So, and the second use case it is image segmentation or object detection. This kind of application made a great success in various medic medical application in the past few years. Unlike image classification, it would read the same images and then tell this image contains tumor or not, but the segmentation or object detection is pointing out specific part of the image and highlighting it with contour or That's... box to, to highlight it. That's pretty cool. So uh, let's go to the third example. 
Um, so it's a medical document translation. In fact, it's using not only CNN, but also RNN architecture. So this application reads images and then make automatic report explain what's in the images, make sometimes diagnosis, report to the patient. But this automates a task what doctors are doing. So wow, so basically this is a robot that is going to steal all the doctor's job or what? I think that's a bold statement. Um, I think it would be the collaboration of AI and medical doctor. So AI helps doctor to reduce unnecessary task. It, this job would be approved by the doctor in the end, but most of the job can be done by AI. Okay, by the way, is the mechanism of uh, CNN similar to how standard artificial neural networks work or how is it distinct? Um, well, the CNN, it contains artificial neural network layers, but not only that, it also contains convolutional neural network, which will be shown on the next slide. Um, so convolutional layer is the core element of CNN, highlighted in blue color. In the convolutional layer, two components are important to remember, filter and pooling. So basically, these two kind of understand mm. the images Kimi, what is the filter? So what's the filter for? Um, so filter is, is the way you look at the images. So each, there are lots of features in the network usually, and each filter is extracting different features from the images. Mm. So can I imagine it, for example, like this? I have a convolutional neural network that is supposed to detect ducks. I give it a picture of a duck pond and then this filter for example goes over the picture scans for eyes and then it says ah here and here and here is an eye then you have a second filter looking for feathers and a third filter looking for beaks and if all these three filters found something then the cnn knows oh probably it's a duck yes this is um um good metaphorical approaching how CNN is working, but CNN filter is detecting more abstract features from the images. So not eyes or beaks, but more horizontal lines or vertical lines or some round shape. So each filter keeps different features from the images and then propagate it to the classifier layer, the, the end of the layer. All right, great. And what are these pooling layers? Uh, pulling layer is basically behaves like a compressor. As you see on this example, it reduced the size of the image to a quarter of the original input. But still, the most important features remains on the output images. Output. Mm. Okay, so I can imagine it. I take a really high resolution picture with my mobile phone. And then I want to send it via WhatsApp and then WhatsApp basically takes the big picture and makes a small picture out of it. But this sounds right. really weird. So you take a, a really nice, really high resolution image with a lot of information and then you reduce it in size and lose a lot of information. So isn't that crazy? Well, you can say that you can lose the Im information, but um, for the processing to make a decision if the image is cat or dog, you need to keep important information. Maybe you don't need all the information of background. Mm. <clears throat> you need to keep important features of the images. So you basically make the problem easier to solve. That's quite interesting. This helps for the computation. Uh, so it reduces those two filter and pulling. It reduces computation or costs a lot compared to the standard artificial neural network. All right, Kimi, then let's have a look at these implementations. 